Great pleasure to be joined by Alan Miltz today. Alan is the co-author in Scaling Up of the Cash Chapter. And right now, I can't think of a more relevant person to be talking to with regard to some top tips on all businesses, what we need to do in terms of surviving this horrible, horrible crisis. So welcome, Alan. Thank you, Neil, and greetings from Down Under. Okay, so I'm a South African chartered accountant. I've uh, been living in Australia now for about 30 years. And um, about 20 plus years ago, we created a technology company with two other South African accountants who had emigrated to basically change the way people looked at numbers. So the banks were looking at numbers one way, business spoke another language, and we thought, imagine if we could create a platform which could be used by business and banks. So my system today is used by about 500 of the global banks. Um, we took on Moody's and S&P, and we were successful. I sold the business about six years ago, and it's one of the biggest banking platforms globally. And then my new baby is Cashflow Story, and that's all about making numbers simple. Making the management team love the numbers because your business is no different to a story. If we understand the story, we'll know how to improve the ending. So every business I'm going into, I'm discussing their revenue, their margins, and their profit. And business says to you, if my revenue is growing, my margins are improving and I'm profitable. Business is great. And then the obvious next question is, well, why is your cash flow so tight? And people look at you fairly blankly. Yeah. And my answer to everyone is cash is king. That is the oxygen of your company. And you need to understand how to stimulate your organization. Now, particularly in today's time, I'm getting phone calls by the hour of companies in distress. And it's all about cash, cash, cash. And the war room consists of the senior management meeting their fix we need to educate. And I'm educating every single management team on the art of becoming a financial storyteller. And as I said to you, revenue, is vanity, profit is sanity, cash is king. A story of numbers is told over four chapters. The chapter one, we all get, it's our profitability. But equally important is chapter two, the working capital. I just look at three items. How quickly people pay you, your receivables, your inventory, or in a service company, work in progress, and how you pay your supply. Chapter three of the business is the rest of the balance sheet. And that's primarily the investment in your assets. The result of business is cash flow. So people are looking at chapter one profit, and then yep. they're wondering why they don't understand chapter four, Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so before I can do the fixing, I make sure everyone in my war room understands what is cash and there's no surprises. We all are looking at the same story and we can tell the story in a consistent way. The most important item to a bank is even though the banks are, are helping you at the moment, every bank is obsessed with cash flow as measured by your capacity to repay. So yes, while we're going through this mess, the banks are gonna support us. But one day you're gonna to have to repay your debt and hence cash is gonna become even more critical. Organization and management teams are gonna to need to become obsessed with cash and another term I call the quality of cash. In okay. other words, cash flow is the result of, of management as well. We gotta teach our management to make better decisions. The number one area that we'd like to focus on right now is power of one. So let's just work, work through now, Alan, the, the, the importance of the power of one. So as I said to you, we've created this war room. 
every company I'm working with has got a team consisting of marketing, sales, operations, finance, and we sit in a room and we're meeting weekly or monthly and we're discussing the numbers. And every person understands cash flow. So as I said to you, cash flow is the result of your profitability and it's the result of your working capital. Because your management team is not really responsible for your assets, your provisions, the rest of your balance sheet, which are all baggage. But they're responsible for profit and working capital. A business has got seven levers they can play with to improve the profit and the cash flow of the company. There are four levers in profit and there are three levers in working capital. So the four levers of profit are price, volume, cost of goods and overheads. And the three levers of working capital are receivables, accounts receivable, inventory or work in progress and payables. Yeah. The sitting in front of the war room on the wall should be your power of one. And then you need to workshop, put these seven levers up, price, volume, cogs, overheads, receivables, inventory, and payable, and then workshop each lever with your team and say to them, the only way we can fix our cash is by altering these seven levers. Look at each lever in isolation, get everyone to come up with ideas, then rank them from most to least sensitive, and choose the top one or two or three best ideas for the actual um, period. And that becomes my power of one implementation. The power of one is the code of the company. There are seven levers. So when you are doing your stress testing, when you're looking at the future, you're basically saying, what if volume goes down by 30% or 40%? Mm -hmm. What's gonna be the impact on cash? What are the other levers I can play with to plug the hole? So maybe I need to pay my suppliers 20 days slower. Yep. Maybe we need to collect seven days quicker. And then when you go to the bank, you're showing the bank exactly because banks hate surprises. Even though the banks are funding us at the moment, the banks want to know that you've got a plan. Your plan is the power of one. How many one percenters or one day changes are we going to make in our business to obviously mitigate our risks? Very good. So you talk about a war room. How do you recommend people setting up a war room? Can you do that virtually or do you need to have that in a physical space? Well, in many countries, even in Australia today, we are operating remotely unless you are working in industries that are considered mission critical yeah. to the country. So you're going to have to set up these virtual war rooms, but you need to have these conversations. The teams that I work on understand cash flow. And the most easy way to explain cash is Neil cash flow has been complicated by us accountants. Cash flow in simple terms is the movement in your bank accounts. So if you look at your bank account at the end of the month and you compare it to your bank account at the beginning of the month, the movement is your cash. Uh -huh. So it's the movement in your cash at bank plus your short and long-term debt. What has been the movement in all your bank accounts? And compare that number to your profit or the loss for the period. And then use the power of one to obviously improve the situation. Beautiful. Great, great advice. So talk about the power of one. Um, and you, you mentioned stress test uh, a number of times. Um, well, that's something that you brought into your website now. Is it how can businesses access the stress test, Alan? So, Neil, we are my business cash flow story. It's a global um, technology company. Yep. It's all about making numbers simple. So we develop a, a a methodology that people can enter minimum amount of numbers 
that produces a four chapter health check, mm -hmm. that produces the power of one, it enables you to do projections. We at Cashflow Story are allowing customers of yours, Neil, yeah. to access our technology at no cost for three months. So thereby they can enter their financial statements and we'll send to you, we'll make a training video of how to use the, the technology, use cash flow story, and then we'll advise how best to use it. So I would start entering two years of annual data yep. historically to get a picture and then enter your um, December quarter, so September to December, and then enter your January to March quarter, and then project forward for the next two quarters, and let's then see how many power of one changes do we need to make in order to help your business survive in these terrible times. Yeah, very, very good advice. So I think that's something I definitely we'll, we'll offer up to, to all of our clients, many, many of which already use cash flow story get huge amount out of it i think it's now doubling down even more to make sure that the numbers are up to date is this something that you can do quarterly alan or is this an annual annual sort of uh, area of focus i'm definitely doing quarterly yeah when i'm stress testing my business you know as i said to you the history is not an indicator of the future we need to be looking what's going to be happening in the june quarter the september quarter what's going to be our whole and I want my management team to decide to understand the gap. Now we've all been to London and we all get on the more beautiful underground and they all say to us when we get off, mind the gap. <laughs> I'm saying to every single company, mind the gap, use the power of one to mind the gap. Very good. So, on through the importance of the power of one and can do a bit of stress tests in the business. What else can, um, what else can you offer to, for, for people now, right now to uh, improve their, their financial skills? What, what have you got coming down the line that people can maybe invest in over the coming months, Alan? Well, we've, we can, we've developed online training programs, eight, seven, eight hours of training programs. As you know, Neil, I wish I could be in London. I love coming to your beautiful country and your beautiful city. But in the meantime, we've got online materials which we can share with your users. Perfect. So I think what we'll, we can do is, uh, obviously it's challenging times at the moment, but I'm sure we can make it uh, some, some of the investment for those very, very palatable, knowing that that's a great, great way um, of, of helping the community right now, um, but most importantly, helping the community survive. And if you got a grip on your numbers, you've got a good feel for um, where your cash is, that's a great starting point, but also maybe use as a mindset. If you can't do or after other things over the next 90 days, next 120 days, an opportunity to really improve your financial acumen. And I think some of the uh, training, some of the knowledge that Alan's got is going to be a massive benefit to all of us. So we'll keep everyone posted um, on how they can access that material, how they can access the stress tests, how they can access the power of one. Um, and if there's a couple of final thoughts then, Alan, just that you'd leave, um, Leave, leave, leave the um, listeners of this podcast with, what, what, what would they be? Well, lesson number one, no surprises. Okay. That's absolutely critical. As leaders, we need to be able to predict. We need to be able to delegate and then repeat, repeat, repeat. So ability to predict, stress test your numbers and understand what is your realistic and worst case scenarios delegate we need to create a war room whereby everyone understands the numbers and people are starting to make better decisions because cash flow is the result of growth and management yeah. we need to teach the management team to do their job better and then repeat 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 the more we make cash flow part of your dna the better we will be the power of one will help you get Thank you so much. Great, great advice. So, uh, yeah, it's been a real privilege to be joined by Alan today down from Melbourne, Australia. And uh, thank you again for your wise words. Yeah, such a practical area that we need to really focus on right now. So, again, once again, thank you so much, Alan. Thank you so much, Neil.